determined that I only had six months to conceive, after which it would have been impossible for me to conceive, circumstances then moved in where I had to choose a tubal ligation. That was extraordinarily painful because it's the first time that I came face to face with my perceptions of what my life was going to be, the reality of what my life was, and the unknown of what it would become. Most of us grew up with the belief that, like our parents, we will someday marry and have children. The majority of people in society choose to follow the traditional course and create families of their own. But what of those who travel a different path altogether? Some make the choice, certain after much time and consideration, that they want a life that does not include children. For others, the desire for children is very strong, and yet their attempts at pregnancy are fruitless. They have evolved into a life without children. I got to be 27 and it felt like time for me. Uh, but uh, when I talked to my OBGYN, he indicated that I could have some medical challenges um, around my cholesterol, high, hereditary high cholesterol, and I could have problems with that. So I really struggled with a medication that I had to take, which was like, was like, um, like a, a Metamucil. And it was very difficult, and my husband wasn't supportive of it. He knew that I was going through this in order to get pregnant, but he, he really wasn't supportive of it. And it turned out that he really didn't want to have children, and I didn't know that. He didn't tell me. And so it was sort of forced on me. And, uh, and I was very hurt by that. I ended our marriage over that and was disappointed because I really thought that I could have made an excellent mother. A hysterectomy is a removal of a woman's uterus. There's an abdominal hysterectomy where an incision is made in the abdomen and the uterus is removed that way. There is a vaginal hysterectomy which is performed entirely vaginally and there are no incisions on the belly. Or there is laparoscopic where a camera is placed in the abdomen and the uterus is uh, removed vaginally. I had a hysterectomy at the age of 39. I've tried to have children for 10 years. Um, it wasn't happening because of medical conditions. But I have to honestly say that as a child, um, most Females are practicing having the husband and the wife and the 2.5 children and the dog. I never had a vision or a sense that um, children were going to be part of that. By the age of 60, more than one-third of women in the United States have had a hysterectomy. I had a hysterectomy um, because I... My, my doctor had discovered a precancer condition and it was very, it was an emergency hysterectomy to get out in front of actually get, getting cancer. And I wondered how I would feel, whether I would still feel whole and fulfilled after that. And in reality, I, I really did because I was already in my 40s and already pretty sure children were already off the, off the table for me. The definition of a bilateral tubal ligation is interruption of the fallopian tube, and that can be accomplished in a variety of ways, either by full grating or burning the tube, by placing a clip that occludes the tube, or by removing a portion of the tube so that the sperm cannot reach the egg. When I had the tubal ligation, I got a lot of flack from women around me, from um, men around me, from um, people I didn't even know. And so many people said, what's wrong with your husband that he's not getting a vasectomy? And I said, okay, but see, this is not, I mean, this is our choice, but I'm getting my tubes tied.
For those who make the choice to not have children, the impacts within family and friendships, even society itself, run deep. For some, this choice is met with tolerance and understanding, while others are faced with disbelief and perhaps even anger. Sandia is a neurosurgeon. She broke tradition and walked away from her arranged marriage because the constraints put on her from her husband's family were too much for her to bear. She was determined to not bring a child into a world where she herself felt like a prisoner. My name is Sandhya. I was born and raised in India and uh, lived there for uh, a quarter century before I moved to uh, the UK where I lived for a few years and then I moved to America about five years ago and I live in San Francisco now. I played with pretty much everything, you know, dolls and trucks and everything. So it was, and I was a tomboy. However, I don't think that influenced my decision to have or not have children. It was uh, the f fact that I had a very uh, unexpectedly, very arranged marriage into a very orthodox family. And uh, given the fact that I didn't really get along with uh, the family, I decided that, and uh, that caused a lot of disruption in my personal life and my professional life. And so I decided that, you know, one marriage has caused enough disruption in my life and I'm not going to disrupt it further by having children. Plus my in-laws or my ex-in-laws family were very insistent that, that I have their heirs, so of course I refused. A 2006 U.S. Census study found that a record 20% of U.S. women aged 40 to 44 did not have children, compared to 10% in 1976. My sister just died and I don't want to lose anybody else, you know, and I don't think I could go through what my parents went through, losing a child, you know. There's no way to keep your children absolutely safe, absolutely out of harm's way. There's no way to do it. And so you, you take that risk, I think, when you have kids. I grew up in a single parent home, um, my mom, and I, I, never, I never felt she was overly motherly, so, which was fine with me. I felt comfortable with that. And it um, turns out that you know, like her, I kind of don't really have that super strong smotherly, motherly, you know, gene. And I kind of thought as a younger, much younger person, like in high school, I think I even had a little tinge of like, I should have a baby. And that quickly passed. <laughs> and it really became an evolution that I really wanted a lifestyle that didn't involve children. A 2004 U.S. Census study found that 18.4% of U.S. women aged 35 to 44 were childless. It was a pure conscious choice, um, purely a conscious choice that I probably made uh, in my mid to late 20s. But I would say the, 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 the choice probably went, the, the, the conversation with myself probably went back way, much, much farther. As a child, you know, I, I, you know, there's the assumption and just, well, of course that's what I'll do. And you would talk with friends when you're 16 and, oh, I'll probably have kids. But it was never a strong feeling. So I, I think I knew even younger, but the conscious choice was in my 20s. I always knew I wasn't mom material. We weren't surrounded with kids because my mother wasn't. She herself, she didn't really want, she was terrified to have a child. I was terrified to have a child because I didn't want to end up recapitulating my childhood. When I met my husband, I was in my early 20s and he wanted kids and he actually said to me if you don't want children there's no reason I would have to leave you and I didn't say anything then I got pregnant in one month I didn't know what to do except go along with it because we told everybody and everybody was so happy and and I, I was leading a double life. I told nobody except the gynecologist when he told me I was pregnant. And he asked me, he said, do you want this baby? I said, no. The opportunity never really arose that made me say, oh yes, this is the person I want to have a baby with, want to settle down with. So I never made that choice. Like everybody had a lot of boyfriends and all that, but just never seemed right. So the situation didn't seem right. And to bring a child into a situation that wasn't right didn't feel good, so I didn't. Ruth grew up in Southern California and later became a preschool teacher for 15 years. 
From calming fears to exploring the world of tide pools to singing them to sleep, Ruth has guided hundreds of children through the magical world of childhood. Yet she has encountered questions from those around her regarding her choice. It was even implied to her once that she would never know love because she was not a mother. My husband and I always thought we would have children when we first got married. Uh, we were planning on having them right, right away, thought better of it, waited a little while, and then started realizing that maybe it wasn't the path for us, and uh, talked about it a lot over a period of a, of a couple of years, and then decided not to have children. When I was uh, 13, I remember seeing uh, a news program with Tom Brokaw or someone and they had announced a study that if people who have abused their, who have grown up as abused children will grow up to abuse their children. And I knew that I was in an abusive relationship with my parents. And so at that moment when I was 13, I made a decision that I would never have children because I heard that statement on television and I thought I didn't want to get pregnant and abuse my children. Although later in life I realized that I never would have abused my children or never would. I felt very strongly because of my childhood filled with violence and neglect that at an early age I would look at people and think, you know, why do they have children? Are they gonna love those children? And um, why did my parents have me when they weren't up to it? I mean, they were up to it financially and they just weren't in the mood. You know, I think that life, you know, as you go through life, you have choices. You, you have forks in the road and you make decisions. And for me, it, it, the fork just kept getting more and more to the right. <laughs> I remember this one particular time I was in Australia. I was in this old station wagon with these English people. She was 22 and I was 23. And she was, she, you know, beautiful English girl and she, was just but very strong willed strong minded even at that age just like and we talked about kids and she said I'm not having them and I thought to myself at that point I looked at her and I said neither am I when I was younger I always thought I would have kids and when I got married I believed I was going to have kids but it was never a uh, something I actually had this huge desire for my name is Tamara Burnt, and um, my uh, hometown is Chicago, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. Originally, I didn't want to have kids, and then when I was in my, I would say, late 20s, early 30s, probably more like my early 30s, I really wanted kids, and then that evolved into um, not wanting to have kids later on, and so it's been an ebb and flow um, that it hasn't been a straightforward answer. I eventually got married. And then it was sort of the next thing a lot of, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? People say the darndest things. I don't think they mean to be so nosy, but they are. So we had, the adoption was underway, and um, four days before the birth of the little boy, the woman, the biological mother, uh, called us and said she changed her mind and that she decided to keep her son. I was flying back from North Carolina where we had just put a bid on a house with a nursery. I sort of took it as it wasn't meant to be, and there was a part inside that I never shared with anyone that was... The definition of a therapeutic abortion is a medical or surgical way to remove a pregnancy. I thought growing up that I would get married and have babies. That's what Samantha Stevens did, that, you know, that's what Donna Reed did. Got to the age where you can have children, and at the same time, I also got really heavy into um, some alcoholism. Um, I don't drink anymore, I haven't for a very long time, but I was spent about 10 years drinking real hard, and it was the same time that I started, you know, having sex and doing all that stuff, and I stopped thinking about anything, if that makes any sense. I just did things. I didn't think about them. I didn't think about what could happen. I didn't think about what did happen. I was just in motion, and I used abortion as birth control, and I never thought about things like what if I only get one baby and this is it. I never thought about what if something gets damaged. I never thought about anything. Catherine grew up in the Bronx and survived a tough childhood there. She is an aunt to many, 
and has helped steer them through tough times. Shortly after having an abortion, Catherine found out that she only had a limited amount of time at all to have a baby because of unforeseen medical issues. I absolutely believed, especially throughout my 20s, that I would have children, that, that it wasn't, it didn't occur to me that that would be a choice. That was. I would marry, I would have children. When I became pregnant, it was in a circumstance that I wouldn't let that pregnancy go forward. Um, and I aborted that pregnancy by choice. Hard decision, yes, but I was clear on why I was making those choices at that time. I'm Catalina of El Cerrito. I was born in Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, my family moved to Tokyo. I lived there until I was seven years old and we moved back to Taipei. I lived there until I was 14 before we moved to the Bay Area. And when I was younger, I mean, I, I got pregnant by accident. Once when I was a teenager and the second time I was in my 20s. Both times were not a good time for me to be a mother. I was going to school, going to college. So, you know, I mean, I, I you know, I aborted both pregnancies. In 2007, 84% of all abortions were performed on unmarried women. Lori grew up in a small town near Yosemite. While living in LA and working as a successful businesswoman, she learned that her grandmother's mental capacity was becoming diminished. She moved in with her grandmother and has been taking care of her for over five years. At times, it has been challenging for both of them, but the experience is one that Lori cherishes. At one point in my life, was pregnant and could have had a baby, but circumstances and relationships, especially with the fellow in my life, and we just decided the timing of it wasn't really, really right for us. So at that time, I guess, it was a choice, but now that um, the last five years of my life have really been devoted to taking care of my grandmother who needed me, I feel like part of that's been another uh, life having other plans for me and saying I needed to evolve into being a caregiver for my grandmother and helping her, which has put sort of my life on hold and um, maybe makes me think maybe that's the plan for me. Then I got pregnant again when I was uh, in my early 30s. Um, and I, at the time, I, I was uh, in love with uh, this man. He didn't want to have a child, and I wasn't going to be a, a single mother. You know, I wasn't, uh, that was not how I was, I was raised. Somewhere in my early sobriety, like four or five years, I saw Life magazine did this amazing camera thing where they could go inside the womb and look at a baby at the different stages of development from little bitty, bitty, bitty to baby looking baby. And um, I looked and I found it said this many weeks, this many weeks, this many weeks. And I saw what the baby, the, the latest term abortion that I had, which was I didn't know that expression back then, you know, but it was pretty close to the edge because the doctor that examined me prior to that said, one more day and I wouldn't have done this. And she looked at me like she hated me. And I didn't know what she was talking about, you know, exactly. I still, all that time, never considered it a baby. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I knew that pregnant, it wasn't like I didn't know, but I never thought if I didn't get this done, I would have a baby. I just thought, oh, I'm pregnant, I have to take care of it. I never, I didn't think past there. So I saw the picture of what a baby at that level of weeks looks like. Oh my God. Not like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, what a fool I've been. Just like, oh my God, I had no idea. I had no idea. Who should have told me? Should I have known that? I don't know, you know. Would I have done it differently? I don't know. But it was very disturbing, and I did a lot of crying I should have done through that whole series of pregnancies, you know. 88 to 92 percent of all abortions happen during the first trimester, prior to the 13th week of gestation. I, I had to decide. I, I 
didn't decide until the twelfth week, which is the last week. And I, I told my husband that I couldn't go through with it. There was something very in control for me to be able to make that choice. And I realized that this whole pro-life, pro-choice battle, which we always think of as an abortion issue, was simply a woman's choice issue. At the heart of the issue of a woman's choice for a life without children is the right to exercise full control over her body. The choice to have or not have a child belongs to the woman herself because it is she alone who literally bears the consequences. But is society okay with this? Is this an accepted position for a woman to have complete authority over her body? Is there a moral protocol to procreate? What consequences does society impose when the traditional path is not followed? I really think that it does take a lot of strength and courage to walk away from anything that is bad or that is actually uh, eating your life from inside out, basically. And uh, especially when you don't have your own family to support you or to stand by you and you are pretty much all alone and you cannot recruit the help of friends either because society, uh, you just don't know what your friends are going to think. They were all raised in the same society. So it was a very difficult period. There's a segment of society that needs to enhance and engender and promote motherhood in valuing women. However, through the media, I think that the, uh, the flip side of that is that women without children then have to be overachievers and perfect in their lives and, and do great things to validate their choice not to procreate. And we're all more than vaginas. You know, there's the segment that, that has their, their judgments. They, they've been domesticated and socialized for millenniums as to how it should go and, and how, you know, your life should play out. And I think more than anything, when you do something different or you make a different choice, people are threatened by that. It somehow threatens their, their choice. Rachel Carson gave birth to the modern environmental movement with the publication of Silent Spring. Billie Holiday gave birth to the blues. Queen Elizabeth I gave birth to England as a major European power. Gloria Steinem conceived and reared the modern feminist movement. These women made an indelible impact in history, and yet they did not have children. Did society respect them or admonish them? I find that women with children kind of do this double take as if they've they've given at the office and I haven't and um, like they've participated in what their role as a woman is and I have chosen not to and sometimes I felt a little judgment and a, and but much confusion almost with that cockeyed kind of no babies I was asked many times kind of like this do you have children you don't? Okay. And, you know, sometimes I said, <laughs> it was the gonorrhea. <laughs> okay. And that stopped that conversation cold. It always makes you go, Ugh, kind of deflates you when someone asks you that question because you want it and you wish you could answer differently, but you can't. So then you're like trying to make it sound like there's this glorious reason that you don't or there's this great reason that you don't so that they don't judge you when really it shouldn't be about that. But that's, you know, whether whether they know you or they don't know you, it's, it's definitely like this, there's this question again, okay, how can I answer it so that you're satisfied versus me answering it for my own satisfaction? You know, they, they think, well, maybe either you are, um, you're lesbian, you're, what, you are so ugly, <laughs> you, what, you can, you know, you can you find someone to want to have a child with you. One of my co-workers, uh, well, not anymore, but ex-co-workers, you know, who's from uh, Uganda, and, um, and she, she actually, she was telling me, that uh, I don't have to have a partner to be a mother. And she was trying to tell me, you know, 
that, that that's one of the best things you know for women to to be a mother and and my response was why would i want to intentionally be a single parent in our society i guess it's the norm pretty much as soon as i got married uh, the question that was asked every day or every other day was you know when's the news when's the news when's the news and uh, it was like well what kind of news would you like however everybody just wanted that one big piece of news and even now uh, your family and friends are desperately waiting so that for me to get married again so that I can breed for want of a better word and the fact that I am actually not interested in having kids doesn't register they all keep saying oh when you get the right man you will you will have a baby it's like no i don't want one regardless of a man but in chad a proverb says a woman without children is like a tree without leaves in china and vietnam the traditional belief is that the souls of childless people can't easily rest in muslim cultures women without children aren't always allowed to be buried in graveyards or sacred grounds in South India, young, poor, childless women identified the most hurtful name they are called, Machi, a word in Malayalam that has no English equivalent. It refers to a farm animal that cannot breed. I did feel that I was treated differently because people who had seen me as a married, well, you know, a married Indian girl or woman couldn't decide where to place me. I, I was sent, sitting in any little box that people had in which they slot people. So I was the odd unknown quantity. People don't realize that you shouldn't judge other people because they different live a different life than you. And whether it's the kid, no kid thing or whatever the case may be, I think people aren't real tolerant of things that are different than themselves sometimes. And they put that on you. I don't think that's right. Yeah, over the years I've had people ask me, so you never had children? You know, sort of that judging. And also, or like, so you never had children? Oh. You know, like it's this like sad thing. Or else they go, well, yeah, you know, I think it's important that you follow your heart. And you could tell they're like choking to accept it, but they don't really, they don't think you're telling the truth. When you're talking to a new person, or someone who maybe doesn't know your circumstances and you have to explain that you're a 40-something couple and you have no children <laughs> and you live this, you know, surfing lifestyle where you're traveling a lot and surfing and kind of free. The questions pop up about um, children. You, you, there are times when you have to explain um, why without going into too much detail I mean it's kind of awkward to say to someone you just meet uh, yeah I just had a hysterectomy and I haven't been able to have children so you sort of have to um, put the kid gloves on and explain that it's you've just chosen not to if you ask someone that wants kids why they want them there's not as clear-cut an answer because I think one of two things happen either it's just this inner urge, this inner desire to share that love and to have that child in your life, or there's that very subconscious feeling of responsibility of, well, my mom once always wanted grandkids, or oh, well, my church says I should, or oh, we get a tax credit for that on the, you know, there's these outside forces that I think influence so many people to make them feel like they should have kids, even if they maybe don't want to take that path. People might think it's selfish, but I think bringing a child into the world and then not giving it the attention the child deserves is actually more selfish than deciding never to have a child at all. I have noticed on a couple occasions where I've had to like, I felt like I had to say a reason why I didn't have children. And that always throws me for a little loop. I'm like, oh, oh, I have to explain this? It shouldn't, there should be no explanation. I don't have children. <laughs> Boom. Closer to home than society, some women who make the choice to not have children find acceptance, while others face judgment, even from their own friends. I just made my choice and lost my friends, pretty much. Everybody went with my husband, and I was vilified. It wasn't about me and my decision, which I feel was a very responsible decision. 
I may have been in other people's eyes crazy and messed up but I did the right thing and I've never ever ever second-guessed myself on that when my husband and I had finally decided not to have children and announced it basically to our friends and family how upset people were and how much pressure we got for months and years even about you know I can't believe you're not doing this you're a child could have you as their parents and you're not allowing it and you're not giving your your parents grandchildren you know just lots and lots of lack and actually probably most strongly from my friends than my family. I had one friend who I thought knew me pretty well who said, oh, but, but you know, what if something would happen and you and your husband would split up and then the next guy would want kids? I said, it's not, it's not my husband. It could be Bob, Joe, Jim, Mary, or Jane. I don't want kids. I'm making the choice with my body to make sure I don't have an oops at 35 because I don't want it. Could I raise it? Could I, you know, yeah but I didn't want it. And just had a friend who, you know, helped, handed me her nine day old baby girl and my heart just, oh, I just went, my heart sank, the emotion set in and, you know, had that moment of kind of wish this was my baby right now. I wish that this was the, somebody handing me my own baby. A few of my friends had given birth and I was there for the birth of their children and there was this emotion that came over me that it was sadness and anger and resentment, not towards them, but just towards the fact that I wasn't going to have that experience. Sometimes it is the family that is most affected by a person's choice to not have a child. By making that decision, in a sense, they are not contributing to the lineage of their family. And at times, this is difficult for their relatives to accept. I remember being at a wedding and my Aunt Jo it was a week before I was going to fly to Spain to teach English for a year. She said, so when are you, when are you going to get married and have kids? And I, and I looked at her and I said, you know, I know I'm not going to have kids. And she, con like this consoling pat on the shoulder, you know, like, you just haven't met the right guy yet. And I wanted to say, what the f*** does that have to do with it? <laughs> there was an incredible sense of freedom, actually, af after this directomy. Of, uh, in one, on one hand, I lost that possibility, but that was going to come to an end soon anyway, um, with the menopause impending, and and uh, it, it it didn't it didn't matter. It was it didn't matter. There were so many other things that were wonderful in my life that it really didn't have an impact. I uh, reconnected with my father after a very long absence, you know, like forty years, and. Um, <clears throat> In talking to him, of course, the natural question is, do you have children? And, you know, are you married? What, you know, what you have to tell your life? I mean, I wasn't used to telling my life because everybody I know knows my life. I definitely think there are times where you have to, um, you know, give a further explanation. And it's not just the perfect stranger on the street, but, you know, the father you haven't seen in a while who, you know, is curious. I know that it's my responsibility to make sure that my grandmother is okay when she, you know, started uh, having these signs of memory loss, I didn't want to, I couldn't live with myself if I knew I just ignored it and didn't start going into the doctors with her and start inserting myself more into her life and trying to see what was what was going on. And, and I don't understand why we wouldn't do that given that she was always there for me. Now it's time for me to be there for her. Through that experience, I think, gosh, who's going to be there? Who's going to be my Lori? Who's going to who's going to be there for me? And um, and I don't know what that makes me really sad. I don't know what's going to happen if I don't get married. If you don't have children. There's only so much you can ask of your friends. <laughs> so that one is really really hard for me. It scares me. For each of these women, the consequences of not having a child can be as varied as the women themselves. Yet being in the less conventional role, more often than not, childless women find they have to defend themselves. I just couldn't do it. 
I had too much, too many issues. I thought I had a monster inside of me, not the child, me. I thought I had a monster inside of me, which I did. And I couldn't be a good mother. In the years that I was choosing not to have children, I think that there were judgments being made um, by friends, by family, and by people who knew me and people who didn't know me. Um, some valid, maybe some invalid. But I don't believe it, it changed my potential of who I am. It didn't change the potential of my spirit. It didn't change the potential of my achievements, very personal achievements. Um, and I think having, having children might have put me in the back seat. Directing Sesame Street, I was around kids all the time, all day, every day, you know, that I directed, you know, and, and we always had to create uh, pieces that worked around whatever the kids said. We wanted the kids just to be who they were as opposed to giving them lines and stuff like that, you know, and we got, they weren't professional actors. Um, and I love those kids, but again, it's the kind of love that I have for children in general, which is oh, absolutely precious when they need to be, you know, diapers to be put on or whatever. I'll give them back to you, kind of thing. So I think I've been a professional non-mother for some time. <laughs> Probably most of all of my life, right? I think if I was looking for that, I would find it all over the place. It's not in my consciousness. It's not what I expect. It's not how I think. I don't judge myself for not having children, so I don't pick up a lot of that. You know, I think if I was feeling guilty about it, I really believe what you focus on grows and you attract what you expect. And so if I expected to be judged, I would probably be finding that. I don't want to have that regret one day that I feel like I really did miss something, that I'm missing something. But I don't feel like right now I'm completely missing. I don't have, I guess my grandmother in a way is almost a, a, a child for me because of the, you know, she needs that care and making the meals, spending that time. We you know we read together. We do a lot of things we maybe would do with the child so in a way she's filling filling that void for me right now without me kind of realizing that I think I'm just now saying it out loud and, and realizing she is filling part of that for me I don't get to see her grow and always learn new things but there's a lot to caregiving for her that I think is maybe I'm not missing motherhood so much because of that I I think other people may find it offensive, but I actually wake up every morning feeling like I dodged the biggest bullet in the world. And I do. And I, I think children are fabulous. I, I realize that once you've had them, you can't imagine your life without them. But I just think it's overrated. In having children, part of that decision has got to be that you must subjugate yourself to launch those children. And I'm glad I chose to launch myself instead. I feel like there's a lot of like pity. You know, I, I assume that people probably think that I can't have kids since I don't have them. They just think, oh, well, maybe there's something wrong or. You've never loved until you've been a mother, which I heard endlessly. It's not really perceived as a valid choice not to have children. Widely, it's just expected that you're gonna have children and that's the choice that, that you'll make. And if you don't, it's, you're missing something. Uh, like you're missing a huge chunk of, of the human experience if you don't have children, which I, I think you're missing a beautiful experience, but it's not the only one. Some women like Gwen found an unexpected benefit to not having children. She found that she was able to be that special aunt who has extra time for her nieces and nephews to take them camping, be their friend, an adult who is not their parent. Author Melanie Notkin speaks to the very needs of these women in her book Savvy Auntie, the indispensable handbook for aunties of all ages and for every single married or partnered woman navigating the ultimate celebration of life, children. I started to have a very special and unique relationship with my nieces and nephews as the aunt who did not have children, as the aunt who had 
the dogs, as the aunt who had the other things in her life, the aunt who liked going hiking and camping and playing and doing things that parents didn't do. I started developing a whole different relationship with these children because I was not a parent. And if I had been a parent, that relationship would not have existed. And so I felt a role in my family that was really important that only happened because I was childless. One thing I think that's that I feel is really important in changing community attitudes to not having children is I would like to see like it become a, a valued role to be a, like a caregiver, sort of the, the wider circle underneath of the parents of, you know, being there for kids, your neighbor kids, if their parents have to go to work and they're sick or uh, just the role of being a caretaker that supports parents and children. I think it's really important for teenagers to have adults who are close to them in their life who are not their parents. For women who have evolved to not having a child, who can't have them, whether for physical or other reasons, the journey is peppered with varying emotions. It takes time for the psyche of a woman to accept this loss. In cases where women have had hysterectomies, Sometimes there is an emotional struggle with the physical relinquishment of their womb, feeling as if a part of them has been taken, that they are no longer whole. Even if a woman really wants a hysterectomy and is very happy with the end result, I have noticed that there is a grief, a grieving, a loss of a part of them, um, of an opportunity to have a child, even if perhaps that was never their plan and people don't have an emotional connection to their gallbladder or their appendix but they do their uterus what it might change is how i feel about myself as a woman as a complete whole woman and that's up to me that's not up to this disease and that's not up to the surgery this is up to me in my mind how i deal with that not having children that has passed out of my life. There is a concern about who's going to take care of me in old age, okay, but you know, that's completely self-serving. Um, I like children, but not having had them has afforded me the opportunity to make choices that I wouldn't have been able to make. In a way, I, I missed knowing. You, you, you know, your cycle. It wasn't that I missed it, but I missed the knowing and 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 I regretted missing losing like the possibility but that was eventually going to go away anyway and I pretty much found a way to balance that I, I believe that's a thing that everybody has I think it's the same as it's that craving that never goes away it's that wanting God thing that people don't all call God so that when you see when I see somebody having that connection where the baby holds their face and there's this thing in their hearts and, you know I think wow I don't know that that's the only place that you can connect at that level but maybe and so that I ache for that but I always have and I I just stop thinking I don't consider the having a baby the only way that that, that exactly. can happen I had a dream one time though where I held my own daughter and I felt that intense intense love and I can still feel it to this day when I talk about it and did I want to have that no and if there was any dysfunctional reason for me not having kids it was that I never wanted to love something that much and lose it I think about what I want my legacy to be and a legacy doesn't just happen in one day you have to work at it and to me what I want my legacy to be is that um, I really want to be somebody that people say, you know, wow, that's, that's somebody I admire. And, um, and that uh, I'm proud to have as a friend and a daughter. And, um, and it's loyal and will always be there for me. For each of these women, there came a time when they had to accept the cards they were dealt, or stand firm in the decision they made. I am relieved daily. 
have children. <laughs> and I say that with a little bit of sarcasm and sense of humor, but I, it wasn't meant for me, this go around. And if there's another go around, it may be my thing. I think what helped was when I came to terms that I am the mother. Um, I had such mother issues until I realized what a mother I am and can be. I mean, I, I truly feel I am symbolically um, a, a mother. I'm not an incredibly uh, religious woman. I don't belong to any kind of religious group, but I have a very strong spiritual connection with my maker, our maker. I always felt that, or I came to terms with the feeling that if my God wanted me to have a child, it would have came naturally. It wasn't something that had to be forced. If that wasn't what was brought into my life, then there is a different path for me that he wants me to lead and fulfill. Does my choice to be childless make me cold or unimportant? Does it devalue me? None of the above, none of the above. Um, my life has been blessed, truly so, so blessed with wonderful women and women on all different arcs in their lives, okay? Um, and the women I'm closest to are the women who validate my choices as I validate theirs. In meeting young women who are just trying to stop drinking and using drugs and being able to tell them about how I used to do, they don't believe that I used to do what they do because I'm this person now. But, telling them that I went from there to here and that it can be done and it's great and here's how I get to participate in a, in a lot of people getting on the road to becoming who they can become and that's very fulfilling. Being excited about not letting things get in my way, my dreams again, like I'm going, you know, I'm just going to start this dream and get to this dream. There's no more excuses, just, you know, stop letting things get in my way and, um, and I'm allowing myself to get towards those dreams again and just being happy and, and, and uh, letting go of the things I need to let go. And that's, but it takes time to, to get to that point. So I'm happy that finally I think I'm getting to that point and I can um, be the event planner and, 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 uh, and uh, a great dog owner and, and go to the beach and uh, just do the things that maybe I, I, I was not taking for granted but just couldn't get to it that because of sadness and other things sort of haunting me. Yeah, I'm also uh, an animal lover so I've, I've had dogs, cat, dogs, cats, turtles, you know, hamster, guinea pig. I was able to, you know, attend a four-year university. I finished college and I I've started uh, a uh, you know um, urban farm um, to create an edible garden, and now you know I'm I'm going back to school full time to to pursue my my childhood dream. I'm conducting uh, research right now, so the biggest thing that excites me is yeah. finding new things that will hopefully lead to changing uh, certain aspects of you know certain disease processes that I'm studying so that uh, so we can start a na national and a global change in, uh, in a particular health paradigm. So that, that is the biggest thing that actually keeps me going. Everybody always says you have the most peaceful, beautiful, sweetest animals. They're incredible. They're just so trusting and calm. And I think, wow, I'm a good mother. My husband tells me I'm a good mother. My animals are happy. And that makes me feel good. My greatest accomplishment, um, probably being a good person and probably smiling at old people and everyone else when I'm down and just wanting to give back to the world something good rather than something bad.
Um, in my work, I try to alleviate the little bit of the everyday human suffering because I don't think life is easy. I don't think life is fair. I think anyone that ever told us it was going to be either of those things, they lied. So I think just being a nice person, having good relationships, being able to support myself, loving life. Actually, I, I think my, my natural curiosity is probably one of my greatest gifts. That and I'm pretty coordinated. <laughs> I bought a camera <laughs> and I'm learning how to shoot it after all these years of working in television. It's crazy. Um, and I'm learning how to edit on my computer, which is like really learning how to use a computer, basically, from a, a Luddite that I am. Um, so that's really exciting me. Um, I'm passionate about the country. We have a house in the country, and uh, I garden, and we have a big pond, and we have fish, and you know, people cookouts and things like that, and lots of parties and stuff. So I love the country. Um, I love my husband. He's like my best friend. Having uh, a great relationship with my husband for 10 years is pretty, a pretty decent accomplishment, especially since we got married so young. I mean, most people um, don't make it when they get married early in their 20s. You know, I was 20 when I got engaged. The fact that we're still in love and still uh, best friends 10 years later is pretty awesome. I adopted a cat that would have otherwise probably not lived very long um so i really feel in that moment that i not he was my little buddy he wasn't my child but i feel that i gave him a second chance at life so in that sense i feel like i created a second life for him which was really beautiful because he lived to be 19 and you know he had the best life ever i think it's a huge accomplishment that i have a very healthy relationship and marriage. I'm very proud of myself for that, I have to say. It, and it's, you know, it takes a lot of cultivating. It doesn't just happen. Like, I think that would be my greatest. Um, so just the future is so open and as much crap as happens in our past and, you know, my husband and I have had difficult occurrences in the last year or 16 months. We can move past those and we can look forward with positivity and hopeful expectation as to what's coming next and we can leave that negative stuff behind and and move forward into something fabulous. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it all. The thing that I get most inspired and excited about is my running and, and my races and um, it gives me a goal and something to shoot for and um, I, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a large part of my social life um, and but at the same time it's how I grow as a human. Um, being um, to always have something to work toward. What excites me and inspires me is the continued possibilities that that are in front of me. I build gardens. Building gardens inspires me. There's making gardens is, is work that's never done. Gardens are never done. There's always more to do. The environment is constantly changing. The one constant about nature is that it's never constant. <laughs> It's always changing, and so that's exciting to me and inspiring to me. Each of these women have given birth, the most natural kind of birth, that birth from which all life flows, in the nourishment of dreams and the embrace of possibilities. My nursing degree. You know, I was going to get, say getting sober, but that wasn't really my accomplishment. That was circumstantial. I mean, I was, do you want to live in hell or do you want something better? Here's a better thing. But the nursing degree, I put myself through school, I paid for it, I studied, I learned how to study because I had no idea. You know, I mean, I really did all that and I really finished it. And, and now what I know how to do helps people, you know, and so it trickles out. I've given birth to a lot of mess. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, I've created a lot of mess. That's about it. Oh, I've given birth to three books. And let me tell you, that is just like a birth. I'm, of course, it didn't come out my vagina. I worked my heart out, my heart and soul, into a book. And 
I finished it and then it was published and I could hold it in my hand and it went out to the world. So that was quite a birth. Those were three births that were very wonderful. Um, so I've given birth to a, a happy childhood at 51 and um, I'm being the happy child and so um, it's fun being the mother and the child all in one. Um, so many things I can't even tell you. And um, yes, lots of animals, my own personal business. I've started three different practices in three different places. I've um, done a lot of work with animal rescue. I've done a lot of work with domestic violence. I work with my niece and nephews, and nieces and nephews rather. So I work a lot with different groups. I guess I've given birth to my whole life, you know, just I've created my entire life from its genesis on through, really, you know, whether it's my desire to travel and see the world or to learn to play an instrument or to, um, you know, volunteer in Sri Lanka after the tsunami or, you know, help a puppy or whatever. I, I've, I've given birth to my own life every day, every minute. I'm birthing things all the time. Um... I just finished my PhD, so I birthed my dissertation, and I've heard a lot of people equate that to having a child, and oh yeah, it was a task. Uh, I run my own business, uh, I wrote a book, I produced a DVD, um, I've helped other people birth their kids, you know, so um, I, I feel like I'm in a constant state of birth. And so I'm hoping to give birth to my dream of being an event planner and creating special memories for people, you know, all the time, and, and, and just having all of those creative, that creative energy I have, love of flowers and food and all those lovely things, I'm hoping to, to really give birth to that dream very, very soon. I'm a surfer, and so uh, I can't even describe how I feel when I'm out there like riding waves because I kind of consider the ocean a bit of our mother, and I go out there and I see life and energy and this whole cycle going on out there. Overall, my life makes me, you know, happy the way I live it and I'm comfortable in the way I live it. There are things that I would absolutely change. Of course, we all have those. But, you know, if I, you know, if I have to stop tomorrow and I look back and go, oh yeah, that was good times. So, you know, that's, and that's how I feel like everybody should like look at it. You should just do it be happy and you know if you don't have a tomorrow you should know that all those yesterdays were really worth it <laughs> i used to think that i was a weakling for you know just running away but then it was a, a colleague of mine in the uk who actually told me don't you see how strong you are that you are actually trying to fight something that nobody wants to fight uh, just because it is not acceptable to you and that you know that really gave me the courage to go on with my crusade for want of a better word that I will not be in a situation that is unacceptable to me regardless of societal or legal norms. I hope in generations to come that the choice to have or not have children doesn't become a focal point of who a woman is. For all of the conflict and opinions regarding having or not having children, each woman's journey is her own. You may know women like these, a sister, an aunt, a friend. The next time you see them, ask for their thoughts on the subject. You never know. Each womb has a view, bountiful and beautiful, personal and poignant, valid and victorious. We, of the world, are bound by them. <laughs>